Thanks everyone for joining us in Red Hat's office here. Um, it's super casual, so feel free to jump up all the time and finish off all the beer and the sandwiches and make sure you don't leave without a mug and so on. So, um, just to introduce myself, um, I work here in the Singapore office. I've been with Red Hat just over a year. I'm managing our business development for cloud solutions. So that includes OpenStack, virtualization, storage, and of course, management. So that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about, for just about 10, 15 minutes about what Red Hat is doing in terms of agile infrastructure. So what I want to just cover in brief is the leftmost pillar, agile infrastructure, for our three pillar pitch to companies of how you want to use our technology or anyone else's technology to get to a next generation architecture. Because what we think is happening is a lot of companies are going through a lot of transformation. You hear about, you might be experiencing this in your company. Your company's had some years to, to get acquainted with all its customers. They're doing the same thing. And now all of a sudden these startups start showing up and threatening your business, right? If you look at the S&P 500, the average age of the companies in the S&P 500 is continuously getting less and less. Why? Because you get all these unicorns, these new startups that are just showing up and taking the, the thunder, right? So they're coming out of nowhere and, and starting to, to disrupt. So for 26 billion. What's that? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah LinkedIn. For there you go. Billion. So it wasn't even LinkedIn didn't even exist. Well, actually, they've been around for about 10 years. But <laughs> you get those kind of you know, massive wins, right? So you get the, all the same stories about companies like Kodak, right? Doing doing what they do really well. They last a long time, and all of a sudden, these new startups show up and they disrupt their business, right? So you have to remain constantly competitive. You have to come up with an innovation every six months just to keep, just to keep uh, ahead of the, the pack, right? Um, you've all heard of massive software companies like Amazon and Google and so on, right? But what happens is that every company becomes a software company. Every company needs to become a software company. Have you heard of, for instance, Walgreens? It's the biggest pharmaceutical company or pharmacy in the US, right? But they're a software company and you think, why? They, they're a pharmacy. Well, they keep track of all their customers, um, doctor's records, their prescriptions, when they're getting delivered, the timing, that's, that's all data, right? So you, you've heard the same story. Exxon's oil and gas company, all the financial services, that's all just data, software, and so on. And then you get the companies that are disrupting or competing with other companies. So if I said, who are the FedEx's main competitors? Your initial reaction might be the post office or DHL, right? But in fact, look at their competitors today. Names you wouldn't have expected, right? Amazon, Walmart, Uber. I just love the fact that Uber can deliver me, not only for me to, from A to B, but they can also deliver my groceries in a lot of places. Fast food now in Singapore. I got an ad the other day that said the latest Samsung or the latest uh, Android device from Xiaomi, I think, was, was available and an Uber guy would bring it to me. I just type in a code and it brings it to me. In the States, you can order kittens for an hour. I'm not kidding. If you feel at work, you're feeling a little bit glum and you want to play with some kittens, you put in a code and then Uber, they'll bring some kittens and you can play with them for an hour. So I mean, it's, you know, talk about disrupting businesses, right? So FedEx is under, under fire, not from their normal competitors, but everyone else's, right? So that's, that's where things are going. So what we say at Red Hat is that in order to compete with this, you need to go through a digital transformation. You need to be constantly evaluating new ways of doing business, being innovative, changing your business models, and being agile. And the only way to do that is not only to come up with new business models, what you're doing in business, but also the way you do that business. So getting agile with your infrastructure, making sure that your infrastructure and your systems can handle these rapid changes, and most importantly, change the way you're developing your applications and working with software. And that applies to just about every industry that you're in. Right? So as you evolve these new business models, you need smarter architecture. As you get smarter with your architecture, you can rapidly evolve new business models. Make sense, right? And a lot of you might, might be going through that experience. So what are the attributes of a business that's really, truly adopting this transformation and being, being digital, right? You've got to make sure that you're streaming all the line. You've got to make sure that your, your infrastructure is able to be elastic. Everyone's heard about the public cloud and how successful that is and embracing that as a fundamental, right? Agile and responsive, we all heard of DevOps and, and how that, that whole system's working. And utility, like these are all just the, the normal features. And in order to achieve that, we go through the whole process of embracing hybrid cloud, making sure that you're doing rapid application development, CI, CD, a lot of you are familiar with all these terms, right? But from, from this perspective, Red Hat has been expanding our portfolio from just the Linux company to make sure that we are embracing management tools, storage tools, 
virtualization tools and so on. We've been expanding, expanding, and of course our latest acquisition is, is in Ansible, making sure that we're taking care of that, that section of it. So I'll, I'll skip through a lot of this. I mean, it's basically what do you want to achieve, the, the whole agile infrastructure, make sure that your developers, and a lot of you are involved in this, you're part of companies that you want to be as friction-free in doing your day job, right? Make, make sure it's as easy as possible. So what we think of is, what would be the vision for us to be aiming for? What do we really want to achieve? You want to have complete insight and visibility of all of your infrastructure. So you have knowledge of what you have under your control, but you also have the ability to use it. So you can chop and change it. Fancy word there, fungibility. Can you take infrastructure from one project and put it into another very rapidly? Can you take down one project down to as little as possible as it needs and reallocate those resources? And all of that requires traditionally a lot of manual effort and effort, but now you can do that with automation. And that's where, where tools like Ansible come in. So if you had all that right, what do we think you'd achieve? We think you'd achieve this, a good night's sleep, right? You're not only peace of mind, you're not saying, oh, I'm happy my IT infrastructure is taken care of, but in fact, you're actually thinking to myself, I'm not going to get interrupted tonight. Because if your infrastructure is agile enough and able to handle itself, self-heal, right? When some hard drive goes bang in the middle of the night, you don't get a call at three in the morning, you don't have to rush out and fix it. It just takes care of itself. And you come in the next morning and say, oh, that machine went down, but it handled it, it failed over to another one. You can only achieve that if you've got automation, right? So we're looking at how can you get your system managed and autonomous? How can you build the system so that it's able to control all the sections within it, but it's actually able to act by itself? It's smart enough. Not automatic, that's just making manual steps automatic. I'm taking an auto autonomy, right? The ability for a system to actually behave by itself. So uh, Amazon, Jeff Bezos wrote this letter. It's a bit hard to read from back there, but he wrote this letter to his employees in 2003. So basically, he said, from now on, everyone in the company has to interact with each other through service interfaces. Now, bear in mind, this was 2003, so that's what they, they the pre-runner to, to basically just APIs, right? I mean, they were, they were talking about how can I get our teams talking to each other through automation? And he said, I want every one of our teams to actually use these kind of processes to talk to each other within Amazon. And he said, I want to make sure that you do that in such a way that it's externalizable, so everyone is able to expose their systems to everyone else and everyone else is able to consume them, all right? This is my favorite line at the bottom. He said, anyone who doesn't do this will get fired. He was very, very serious about this. And if you think about what they achieved, they basically moved Amazon from a retailer, bookstore, selling CDs online and so on, to the pre-runner of what now has become AWS, which we're all familiar with, right? There was a service-oriented architecture. It was the early days of breaking a system up into microservices and having them all talk to each other. And you'll recognize parts of that in the way that we're engineering a lot of our companies today. And if you can be a 20-year-old company that's able to react and move to this model, you might survive, right? That's the, those are the companies that do the work. The ones that don't, they're, they become dodos, they're gone, right? That's why when you, when you go to Amazon.com, every site is personalized to the very user that, that accesses it. So when I access it, it tells me, it knows my, my buying habits, it knows where I am, it knows it's my birthday, it knows what I bought last week and so on. So it pieces all that together in less than a second and puts out my page for me. That's very specific to me and yours will each be different. And that's how it's doing it, by doing these thousands of microservices very, very quickly. So I'll, I'll skip over this. This is just the, the core tenets of, of um, basic management, insight, integration, control, and automation, which we'll talk a little bit more. But getting back to this idea of managed and autonomy, what is the biggest hurdle, what is the biggest obstacle to achieving this within your company? Think about that for a second. What's stopping you from making all this happen? Because it all makes sense, I hope. But to make it happen, we have to solve a picnic problem, right? That's the biggest issue. Every time a human being gets involved, we're opening ourselves up to error, right? We've got to get that out of the way. You all know how to run the systems, but we've got to get those smarts into the system so the system can behave by itself. If you can do that, you can achieve autonomy in your system and it's well managed. And we can talk about infrastructure as a code, there's a whole bunch of stuff, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with these best practices and so on. So if you can capture your code, and this is where, where Ansible really shines with playbooks, with controls, with, with inventories and so on, those systems can then be used and referenced from a, from a version control, from a code control system to actually generate your, your infrastructure on the fly, right? And they can be used again repeatedly 
for instance, for disaster recovery, right? How many of you can confidently say if we wiped out all your infrastructure today that you could recreate it from a reference of infrastructure as a code somewhere, that you could pull that out and reduplicate it just by instruction? Quite a challenge, but a lot of companies would like to be in that situation. Now, if you do the analysis that IDC has done, they've looked at all the companies and asked, where are you actually on this digital transformation path? From the very left, where you've got the digital resistors, they're clueless, right? They hardly know how to use anything. They're doing manual steps, they're plugging wires, they're running around doing sneaker net. Right up to the digital disruptors, that's the Netflix of the world, right? Where everything's running in the cloud, it's all autonomous. Those guys are getting good night's sleep, right? Because it's all just automatic, it's all just happening, it's all autonomous. So it's actually able to self-heal and handle spikes in load and so on. And that's the real smart stuff. So you want to get moving as far to the right as possible. And you can go and read this research, it's a really good white paper, but it analyzes all the features and things that companies need to be doing to move themselves closer to that right side. The funny thing about this is that most companies, when you ask them where they are on the spectrum, they think they're further ahead than they actually are. They're deluding themselves into thinking that they have everything under control to the extent that they are. Whereas IDC reckons most companies are actually to the left of the 50 mark line. So bear that in mind as you, as you look at some of these tools. Um, I'll jump into a little bit more on the evolution of IT, but I just wanted a quick plug for Red Hat's newest product, Cloud Suite, where we're tying together all of our portfolio together. We've taken OpenStack, which I think a lot of you were at the OpenStack meetup a few weeks ago. We're taking our virtualization, we're taking all of our management tools, cloud forms and so on, satellite. We're going to be integrating a lot of the storage capabilities that we have all into that whole cloud suite performance. Um, skipping over this, I just want to show you the diagram that, that summarizes it all. This is our big, big picture. Now those of you who are familiar with Red Hat from 20 years ago, how we've grown up to be from a Linux, Linux company into the portfolio growing. And you get this whole picture where you start to look at with virtualization, private cloud and public cloud, we're the only company I know that's embracing all the public clouds, Azure, Google, AWS and a lot of smaller providers, cloud providers with Red Hat Enterprise Linux underlying that whole thing, the platform, and the storage portfolio and the management, and all of this now moving towards containers. How many of you are actually using containers in production? In production, yeah, good, some of you. How many of you are investigating or playing with containers? Yeah, starting to explore, right? So you know the whole story and the tools and so on, we're not gonna get into that, that's another, another whole subject. And of course, we're doing all this by way of open source. Everything in Red Hat is open source. So we're taking all those thousands of projects out there and making them to products. That's our whole story. That's the, the, the beauty of, of what Red Hat's business model is from a subscription point of view. So with that, I'll, I'll jump into one more plug. If any of you work for companies in your day job that are interested in talking about this more with Red Hat, please come and talk to us. We have a series of what we call discovery workshops. We're happy to come and visit you guys and talk about just whiteboard, what's going on, where your pain points are, what you're thinking in a completely neutral, non-product way. And then based on that, we can look at how Red Hat might be able to help. That's the discovery phase. We can then move on to design and a deploy phase. Obviously, that, that comes next. But the first concept is this discovery workshop. So you can think about that. All right. Thanks very much for listening to that. I have one more very exciting announcement. We are hiring. <laughs> <laughs> So we have two jobs, and this is the perfect audience for me to pitch this. We have two jobs open right now. Senior Business Development Manager, working here in Singapore, covering all of APAC, focused on Ansible. Very much more technical one, technical evangelist. What he does in APAC. So you've got to know the product, you've got to know the technology, you've got to be happy talking to people and going out and, and helping our, our sales guys. But if you're interested, or you know anyone who's interested, or you know anyone who's suitable, please meet Adeline. Hi, um, I'm actually the TA um, for Red Hat Singapore, supporting Asia. So, if any guys interested to explore further, do contact us. Um, we have free map here, free free take one, and some of the brochure, which will bring you to the right website for the opportunity. Perfect, thanks, Alan. So, yeah, make sure you grab a mug and a, and a brochure on the way out. We've got a redhat.com slash jobs, other jobs as well, but I thought this crowd would be particularly interested in that. The Ansible thing. So this is being broadcast to millions of users, right? <laughs> <laughs> On YouTube, okay. In the cloud. Cool. <laughs> All right, with that, I'll, I'll hand over to our star. I just want you to know, by the way, that Dylan has done Tokyo, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, 
Singapore, and tomorrow we're going to Korea for the final of his tours. He's been on the road for two and a half weeks, so hopefully he'll stay awake for the rest of the evening and entertain you, but he's done a superb job. So with that, I'll hand over to Dylan, star of the show. Thanks very much. Thank